Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Split, the Young Adult Book Review Podcast for readers and writers. <laughs> and, and Robert Scanlon, the author of The Dreamer Chronicle, oh, what? is crying. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I'm Brian Cohen, the oh. author of the Ted Saves the World series. I am not crying. But that doesn't mean that I haven't had deep, heartfelt emotions this week <laughs> over our latest book, All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven, which is a tearjerker. Yes, and despite the optimistic title. Yeah, what yeah. What you thinking? Come on. Uh, this was really awesome and this rivals uh this rivals the other the the other top tier books we've reviewed mm. uh and 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 it's really it, it's a contender for number 1 in my opinion because it's mm. very good and many aspects of it are worth discussing on the show today and we're going to do the regular thing talk we about are. it and then we are. A big thank uh, have you. a prompt at the end. Big thank you too to uh, Lisa Jenkins for recommending the book. Uh, as we uh, hinted on last week's show, it was already in the queue, but um, Lisa, your uh, request for the review made me bump it up a, a great deal. I'm grateful to you for that because, uh, oh my lordy. So Brian, mm -hmm. take it away. Tell us what it's about. All the bright places. Who are the places Theodore you go? Finch. The places you go. Theodore Finch is obsessed with death constantly wondering all the ways he might kill himself. Violet Markey aches with grief and counts down the days until graduation and escape from her small Indiana town. When Finch, Finch meets Violet on the ledge of their school's bell tower, the boy known as the Freak saves the popular girl, even though the papers think it's the other way around. The two are paired on a project to discover the natural wonders of Indiana. But before the assignment is over, they'll learn more about each other, what they're capable of, and both how much love can heal and how little it can do to stop the inevitable. Yeah. We're going to have to be so careful with spoilers in this. I know, I know. Well, we've already said that it's sad. So. It is sad, yeah. That's, um, the, that's the spoiler. It's sad. You're going to know that anyway from the... <clears throat> it's kind of like the fault in our stars, you know. The the book description yeah. alerts you to the fact, and this is this is a book's description, uh, you know, where where it's true. Yes, it's, you, you know, yeah. you, it's this is a classic YA tale in that respect. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. classic doesn't mean unoriginal, or mm -hmm. or original. or copycat, or or what is mm -hmm. thing, isn't it? Or or. Uh, you know, oh yeah, just another tearjerker. Uh, no, it's not just another tearjerker. No, no, it earns every tear that it wrenches out of your eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I want to start off saying this: it's just, it's one heck of a book. It's well written. Yes. Characters are fully realized. The subject matter is important, and and unlike <laughs> The Fault in Our Stars, and I liked The Fault in Our Stars, mm. and a lot of people do. Mm. All the Bright Places, I think, is more actionable uh, from a, I've read this and I've learned something about life that I can do Yes. Uh, than, than Fault in Our Stars was. And, and I think it's a book that probably should be read in every high school. I, I definitely believe that. I really uh, agree. I really yeah. agree. I really hope it gets a sensitive treatment as a, as a movie. I think it's slated for release in... 2017 mm -hmm. um apparently currently with uh with l fanning as as violet isn't it do you think interesting that last week we had todd and violet and this week we've got ted and violet yep <laughs> yeah I was like We're really, all the books are all the books are the same and then we had uh, <laughs> then we had paper magicians and paper mm -hmm. towns and i don't know they, all the bright places anyway it's all connecting but yeah, okay. I, look. Before we get off track, I would totally echo what you said. It is powerful. It's it's an insightful foray into young and tragic love, but the world of adult relationships, social perceptions, mental illness, abusive parents, suicide. Uh, I mean, there are plenty of f bombs. There's uh, this. Uh, uh, I say plenty. It's not. That, uh, that sounds terrible. There are a few. Um, there's definitely sexual content. It's not very mm -hmm. explicit, but it's there. 
Um, and uh, to me, it would be a wonderful book for the the sixteens and overs. And I think, as you said, uh, the the discussion that a that a book like this could create. This is not just it's YA, firmly YA, but it's mm-hmm. an adult literary novel that everyone should read because of the the subject matter. I mean, parents should definitely read this. Oh, that's God. for sure. Oh, yeah, um, you just read it, and I think you know my daughter's about to be teenage, and in in a few months, mm-hmm. oh, you know, is she ever going to share anything with me? <laughs> you know, and the answer is no. So there are going to be mm-hmm. things they hold back because that's what yeah. being a teenager is all about. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. So moving on, you have two smart kids here, mm. but they're believably smart. You oh, yeah. you believe their emotions. It all feels so real which is why when the sad parts hit they really hit home they go deep and and Mm. the knife goes deep and yeah still haven't pulled it all the way out yet (laughs) that's the knife of never letting go Ah. uh, Uh, yeah i mean you'd have to think also that if if somebody was younger than 16 and they were really depressed this could be a book that could you know that could I don't know give them some I, I, I it's hard to know I mean it's it's very sad. make them want to seek out help and you'd hope you'd hope yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I love the fact also is this is written from alternating or sometimes alternating points of view mm-hmm. so you get into both Violet and uh, Finch's head they call him Finch yeah. in, in the in you know it's his last name but I like the way that yeah. they do that it kind of I do too. It's it emphasizes the fact that he's a, an outcast in in school, uh, uh-huh. and they are very different in their heads. You can pretty much, I think, uh, it's different for the audiobook, I imagine, because they would be read differently. But uh-huh. the danger from a written book when you're reading the text, if they're a first person points of view, and people had this complaint about the last book in the Divergent series, where they just couldn't tell who was talking. Um, yeah. And, unless you went back to the chapter start and looked up the name, I'm I've just finished a very popular sci-fi book where um, that's exactly the same thing, uh, mm-hmm. and and I could have said the same thing about that. It was hard to tell. The characters seem to have the same voice. These guys don't have the same voice. Um, I did think that Finch wasn't always as male as he could have been in, and mm. think, so again. Maybe the audio book kind of overcomes that because you've got the the, the vocal. Got a male narrator for yeah, his parts. You did got okay. a female narrator. Yeah, the, so that I kind of overcomes that, and it didn't. You know, it was okay. I, I it didn't trip me up. There was just on a few occasions I thought he sounds a little bit like a girly. He's but then you know he's meant to be a freak. He's meant to be someone who thinks too much. So yeah. that's okay. Yeah, and talking about Finch, I mean. He's like a heartbreakingly complex character. And, oh, and yeah. You, you wish there was something you could do to intervene and make him see the impact of his actions and how uh, he, what he needs to do to get out of his situation. And it's very sad. But then he, but then he wants to as well. You know, he wants to escape it and, and he's suffering and he doesn't, fully explain what he's suffering from and people are scared of trying to guess him out or or make him talk about it or he won't talk i mean is i loved it i mean just i will go back and read this book again um mm. it's uh it, it's i really loved it it's so complex there are so many things going on you know that and underneath it you've got the device of um I had to look up what a Hoosier was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, you know, this device of exploring Indiana and, uh, you know, these kind of clever little things that they come across. And it's it's intriguing. It provides little uh, vignettes for these characters to interact over and discover more about themselves. And so it's not just a go to school, stuff happens, come back, I'm depressed. You know, it's way more than that, even though there are quite a lot of school scenes in there. Yeah, which I think are handled quite well. Very well. Because you could definitely mess up school scenes and they could come off unrealistically, but they they do come off 
Well, they, legitimate. They do, say, they do say from a writer's perspective that, that it's something you should always avoid is writing songs yeah. in schools. Yeah, with YA, you kind of, you know, how do you, you've got, there's always some work around there, isn't there? Uh, mm -hmm. and both you and I have got school scenes in our books. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, well, let's go into the writer's perspectives, unless you have any more reading. No, no, thoughts. no. I think we've, we've, you know, you read it. Read it. It's just so good. And yeah, the, the dialogue is, really is wonderful. It's entertaining. It's sad. It's powerful. It's, you know, it's a, it's another The Fault in Their Stars. And, and as you've said, I think for me, it tops it. Um, yep. And, and I was, for me too. I, I finished it late at night, like literally, probably, you know, half past midnight. <laughs> You're oh, you know, yeah. God. And then I woke up the next morning with it all running around my head. And, and it's not like, it's not like the last two pages are the things that deliver the gut wrench either. I mean, it's the last 20%. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I was depressed the rest of the day, but I, <laughs> I did finish it around uh, maybe 5 p.m. So I, I had, yeah, some, had hours some time. Uh, uh, but this is the thing, you know, why should I recommend it to somebody who's already depressed? Could it? I don't know. I don't know. It's fiction. I don't it's know. Powerful Good fiction. question. And why is it powerful yeah. fiction? Well, let's look at it from a writer's perspective. You're quite right. Let's move on. So writer's perspective, you already brought up the two first person perspectives. Mm. And it really helps us get into both readers, head, both uh, characters' heads. And it, I think it adds to the readers feeling more present in the story. Oh, yeah. Because there aren't many, there aren't any jumps back and forth in the timeline no. it's very it's all chronological from yes. beginning to end so you will not see uh, the same scene from two different characters perspectives no it's a few hours later or a minute later or or two days later yes. but it's never uh retreading the same ground so as a result you you're in the moment you're there when the characters are there yes and I think if you just deconstruct that as well from the, that sort of idea that you've got a scene and sequel, so you've got goal, uh, conflict, disaster, and then uh, a reaction to that, which then results in a dilemma and then a decision. So I think the fact that sometimes the, the reaction and the dilemma and the decision are what we see from the other person's point of view, which is really quite clever, but it's not overdone. So you don't yeah. you don't get something happen and then you go into the other character's head and you get endless pages of what they were thinking about what just happened. It it, it as it, yeah. it moves it moves on pretty quickly, but you do get some sense of how it landed for them. Um, but yeah. I thought it was really clever that it just did not dwell on it because I that would have put me off. Uh, mm -hmm. The story moves. I mean, uh, you know, it's yeah, it does. It's powerful and, and emotionally deep, but that doesn't mean it's not relatively pacey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are some short yeah. chapters too, which is always good. Yeah, yeah, and it's good for making the pace feel faster when you have a short chapter in there. It kind of just kicks you, kicks you along to the now, next one. Brian, so if someone said to you, oh, Brian, I want you to write a book about suicide and abusive parenting and difficulties in not fitting in in society and at school and the death of a sibling um how well do you think you succeed in <laughs> that's tough <laughs> without that's being tough. without being preachy without being preachy yeah and that's actually my next point oh well i had it. Is, my next point so you take it away brian it's tough to pull something off like this and not have it come off like a cheesy after school special that's yeah. for sure yeah you have to earn everything in there. You yeah. earn the moments. And Niven does that with a lot of style, some panache. Um, you fall for these characters, both characters. You, yes. um, you want everybody to be happy. So by the time you want everybody to be happy, that's when she turns the screw and that's when you're unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And boy, does she turn the screws. But yeah, did you get any author's notes from the mm -hmm. audiobook? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were, I listened to the author's notes at the back. Because it's, the, it's the back clearly back. this is written from a very personal point of view as well. So I, I, I imagine that helps it not be preachy. Yeah. Well, there's a acting technique 
that I think applies here called substitution, where when you're acting, you don't necessarily have the same background as a character that you're acting for. Like, say you're playing a hitman, who I have played a hitman before (laughs) uh, in my theater days. You haven't killed someone, but you have uh, betrayed someone. Yes. And you can play betrayal. You can't play that I've killed, you know, that you killed someone. Yes. So I think if you are going to write a book like this and you don't have the personal experience, Jennifer Niven had the personal experience. But if you don't, you need to find where it connects for you, what you can represent, because you can't know what a person felt like when they did a certain thing. But if you can make it on par with an emotion you have felt from a very personal experience and you put that into the book, then it's basically like faking it till you make it. Yes. Uh, So my somewhat off point, but on point, uh, suggestion. No, I think that's really important because uh, if you take the method acting thing too far, then you've got a lot of writers, even in the YA world who, you know, kill characters and, or, uh, portray certain characters who are violent and evil does that make Mm -hmm. the author violent and evil does it mean that they've got to go and practice by killing people so no Um, no so i no i do think that the this is obviously a raw experience for the author that's contributed to their the 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 power of the message in the book and and perhaps the desire to write it um, Mm -hmm. uh, from from, but at no time at all do you really (coughs) feel like it's being preachy in the slightest um, yeah. Uh, in actual fact, I mean, I quite like the fact that the school counselor is more worried about litigation. <laughs> well, not more yeah. worried, but, but as worried about litigation as they As are. worried. I'd say as worried. I think the counselor wants to help. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's fair enough. So, yeah. so it's like we talk about the most. Hey, I just realized in my notes here, I've said Louisiana. Is it Louisiana or Indiana? It's Indiana. It's Indiana. It's Indiana. Good. Yeah. yeah. No um, I, I know nothing. Uh, you know, ask me to name the fifty states of America, and you know, I, I could manage a you couple. Get like ten, yeah. yeah maybe, maybe I could get ten. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> you could get ten. You yeah, but then again, 10. you probably wouldn't even get one. Of I couldn't. Ones. I couldn't get. <laughs> yeah. No. I. I mean, I just. I know a couple of terms of I don't know cities or territories or capitals. Of Australia, but I couldn't tell you like what they are. Yeah, that's right, so. and, and the whole slang thing. So yeah, that's why I had to look up Hoosier. But the good thing about reading on a mm-hmm. device is that you know, you can just hold your finger down over that word, and it will look it up for you. And uh, oh right, that's that what is it, helpful. Is it? Yeah, so you get the Wikipedia, you get the dictionary definition, and, and mm-hmm. stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. That's totally. Well, I'll, I'll do that for the next Australian book that I read. Um, <laughs> But uh, we should read an Australian book. Yeah. But uh, in almost every way, this is my opinion, it, this is, does a better job of what The Fault in Our Stars tried to do. Mm. And The Fault in Our Stars is a good book. Yeah, I, great kinda, book. I kind of hate that we're comparing them, and it's hard not to because... But, yeah, I mean, they've got so many similarities yes. right down to the yes. pun at the end for clues after tragic events. Yes. And, and I think this one does better, and I'll tell you why I think it stays more grounded in reality. There are no trips to Europe, uh, just to the state's highest point. Yes. And I think that uh, keeps us grounded more, and it's not as much about witticism as it is about real characters dealing. Yeah, and that trail of clues, it's clever as well. So Mm -hmm. it's believable. You could think, yeah, this is what, this is what would have happened or what could have happened. Not really, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's so, I don't know. Who, I can't really say yeah. anymore. Um, otherwise, we'll just end up waxing lyrical. I mean, we're going to already get some uh, John Green uh, hate. Backlash? No, yeah. no, well, we reviewed two of his books. They're fantastic. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a little unfair. It's they're different and this has just got something that latches onto your heart that doesn't go away well i just hope that they can you know when it's a movie when it gets out there that it picks up a lot of steam and and people uh a lot of people read it and Mm -hmm. go crazy 
because mm, it's yeah, a book yeah. that deserves that. Definitely deserves that. Yeah. We better get to takeaways. You better. Would you like to go first yeah, or yeah, second? I'll, I'll lead if you like. Yeah, for sure. Go for it. Um, look, I think, you know, we talked a bit about the themes, and but from a from a from both a reader and a writer's perspective, I think, this book doesn't actually wear its heart on its sleeve it's just written with plenty of heart and it's a book Mm -hmm. it's a book that could change lives Uh, i really do think it could do that um you know and it definitely had a profound effect on me and there are very few books that have done that they have and that's why i love reading because occasionally you read something that just jerks your your soul uh, and you think whoa you know i need to take care of that in my life or i need to it's something that, yeah. you know, that, that opens a doorway and I think this is one of those books that could open a doorway for people. Uh, I think that's a great way of putting it, yeah. the doorway, yeah, because uh, you... Go on. Because you, I mean, some people need need that to, to know, need a work of art, they need to see themselves in a character yeah. to know that it's not just a wall in front of them, there is a door there and yes. they can find it yes and it's an enduring story as well it's this uh you know mm-hmm. there's some use of current technology but it's not it's by the by really um, yeah so you know it's it's certainly it certainly should be endless and i think any adult with a teenager should read the book mm-hmm. any adult with a, a sorry with children who are teenagers or becoming teenagers should should definitely read it so i agree Ooh. So my first takeaway, Mm -hmm. uh, takeaway number two, is if you're going to cause your readers immense pain, (laughs) earn it through deep investment in the characters. Because when you care about a character as a reader, you're willing to suspend more disbelief. Uh, And I don't think you need to suspend a lot of disbelief here. But you just earn... Like, as opposed to, I was watching a movie the other day, I, I don't even remember which one, but the mu- the music, the music of that scene was telling me I was supposed to care. You're right, yes, yes. And this is the exact opposite of that, yeah. the, the you care because the author cares, because the characters are believable and likable, and so when... The part of the movie where the music would tell you to be sad, you don't need that music for for this. Yes. Because you know uh you know what emotions to have. You just have them naturally. Brilliant. That's a perfect articulation of what it really means to, to show, not tell. You know, the authors listening to this understand what that means. But for the reader it means that the writer is not saying to you, okay, you need to feel sadness here, like in the movie where they would do that just by jerking your heartstrings by playing some pathos-type music. Um, and in a book, the way you play pathos-type music is you is you say after the character said something, you know, he said sadly or he said <laughs> pathetically. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, Jennifer Niven just doesn't do that. You, you get yeah. to understand the inner workings and and the thoughts and emotions of these characters because of the way they're portrayed, not because of the way she tells us we're supposed to see them. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I think it was really well said, Brian. Shall I finish with the the third takeaway? Go for it. And I think it kind of, it goes to what you just said as well. I think it's really finely written. It's really sensitively written. And, you know, I just from a both a reader and writer's perspective, I'd be really curious to have been a fly on the wall of that process. You know, how Mm. how did it, what did it take to write to write a book like that and what kind of editing did it go through and you know to write a book where the reader wakes up the next morning with their head still full of things running around i mean you know that's it's some process so uh kudos to to jennifer niven and you know a curiosity factor for me in understanding how that came to be yeah yeah you gotta go on down some interviews robert i'm sure she, you know, in the author's note, she talks about it, obviously, but sure there's more to come. And when the movie comes out, I'm sure she'll be giving plenty well, Maybe stuff. between now and then I'll track um, Jennifer Niven down. Um, well, she's probably listening. So, hey, Jennifer, hit me up. We'll, uh, we'll chat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, we'll, we'd love to do that, I think, is if there are authors that we can, the, whose books that we've reviewed, 
uh, favorably or unfavorably <laughs> and, mm. and uh you know i'm sure it'd be a, a, a one-off show special yeah get them all on get them i would love that together oh yeah that's right john green mm. and jennifer niven together yeah I'm Debating sure the meaning of life <sighs> speaking of the meaning of life i'm sure you're going to give us a prompt about how to incorporate the meaning of life as we yep. something really deep in in our next novels yep what would you do if you realized a friend had an undiagnosed mental illness? How would you make sure your efforts didn't do more harm than good? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually, there's something we didn't talk about. That is, yeah, very good, Brian. Very good. Um, one of the things in, in the book that I didn't speak about, it just occurred to me, is labeling. She deals mm. the way she deals with labeling over mental issues. Uh, I thought was fantastic because I'm really against it. I'm really against putting people into a box so that psychiatrists can prescribe yeah. a pill. Um, and uh, yeah, it's beautifully done. I was really pleased to to see that there was some personal experience in there as well. It wasn't just written from a preachy point of view. Mm -hmm. So uh, so yeah, I think that's well said with the prompt there. You know, how would you treat that? And mm. uh, nice. Yeah, I think it's important for people to consider that because we all have those situations from time to time. Mm. And I think that it can be really scary and you, you can go about it in the wrong way for sure. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> this book. Oh, this book. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this has been great. I think everyone should go out and, and grab this one and bring it to the top of their queue because it really is uh world changing yeah if, and it, look if you disagree with that please do come in and tell us in the comments and if you agree with that come and tell us in the comments and you know if the prompt of the week has inspired you to pen something then let us know mm -hmm. yeah let us know on the split book com. you can email us at podcast at the split book com. And if this review has touched you, much like the books of Jennifer Niven have touched us, you can write a review and post it on iTunes, and that would mean a lot to us. It would. So next week, we're on for Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Oh, well Ishiguro. <laughs> yeah, that, whatever. I knew I was going to muck that up. But uh, really looking forward to that because I've seen the movie. Oh, I haven't. So it'll be interesting to uh, see them because, you know, they always say see the movie for uh, read the book first. Uh, so yes. it'll be interesting to see the reverse. And then for you not having seen the movie, I'm sure it'll be a completely different experience. Mm. So. Which is what makes us the split. The split. <laughs> 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 and, and everyone listening to the audio is like, what? <laughs> They've lost their minds. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> that's Robert Scanlon. Yeah. I'm Brian Cohen. Thank you for listening to The Split. Please go check out next week's episode. Keep coming back, and we will be ready to make you cry in new and unusual ways. Yes. Be kind to yourself today. You deserve it. Thank you guys for watching. Somewhere on this page is a subscribe button to the Split channel. We do reviews every week. We would love it if you followed us every single week. Is, isn't that right, Robin? That's exactly right. Follow us now. Hit the subscribe button. Do it. Do it.